All right, welcome back. We continue live right here, Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani and Tim Benz. Give us a call at 412 575 2600. We're talking a lot about hockey, which leads us to our first phone caller tonight. It's Bob in Bellevue. Hello, Bob. What's up? Hi, hi you guys. How are you? Good, good. Well, I'd like to, uh, my comment is I, I, I kind of think that when Sullivan has not played in that 200 foot game, that maybe it's worn down both physically and mentally, and that's why they're having so many lapses. So what do you want uh, them to do? Cheat defensively? Yeah. How'd that work? Plus out they've had the a lot of guys injured too, Bob. It hasn't been a full complement of guys. There have been a lot of guys in the lineup. That's so. true, but I, I just think that lately that you know just their, their giveaways and the, the mental breakdowns are having an effect too. No, I don't think so. You got to play 200. If anything, it's going to get harder. And when they go into postseason hockey, that's when 200 feet of ice is necessary. Plus the goal scoring gets harder to do. So if you're having a problem with goal scoring now, it. it, it, it Probably get worse before yeah, it gets better. Not getting it. deeper in your own defensive end and not skating the 200 feet is not the answer. Let me tell you that. I mean, that's kind of what happened not only against the Islanders last year, but I would argue in the pre-Sullivan era at the end of the Dan Bilesma era and for the one year to Mike Johnston, I think that was very much at issue. So I'd go the other way on that. By the way, that game is still 4-2. Capitals have the lead late in it, so it looks like they're going to get to 86 points. Meantime, we have this tweet from Jeremy Hillman. It says it's not that the Penguins have lost six straight. It's worrisome. Rather, who they lost to. And to your point, Tim, that's what we're talking about. L.A., Anaheim, and San Jose are three of the worst teams in the Western Conference. That doesn't mean they can't beat you once in a while. What it does mean is that you're supposed to win those games on the road and take advantage of points in a very competitive Eastern Conference. And the Penguins simply did not do that. So they got a, they got a rough go of it over the next month. It's head-to-head -head games. you got Washington, Carolina coming up back-to-back -back home games over the weekend after uh, you have Ottawa on Tuesday night. So the, the Carolina series should be interesting. All four games have yet to be played. Yeah, I know in this uh, new gambling era, though, Bob, where everybody is betting on everything these days, there's a lot of gambling houses and casinos that have made a lot of money in recent games on the theory of, well, the Penguins have to beat one of these bad teams eventually, and they just haven't done it. Now, I know the thinking is that they'll do it this time at home against the Ottawa Senators, but isn't this very much the same boat that they were just in, Bob? in the Eastern Conference back at home now at PPG Paints Arena as opposed to what they just had on the West uh, when they took on these awful teams from the Pacific Division. It's yeah, the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. We'll see what they do. Ottawa is just a, a team that's given away to quite a bit of people. All right, let's go uh, to Darla in Delmont who joins us right now. What's up, Darla? Hey, Bob. I just wanted to, to talk a little bit about the Penguins. I, I, I see um, whenever I watch it, and I'm out here, and my husband might be sleeping in the bedroom. He hears me yelling it, shoot the puck. They, they don't seem to shoot the puck enough for me. They always pass it. And then Are you talking about on the power play specifically? If, if well, you, anytime. Well, not, anytime. They, you know, they've been getting outshot, but I, I don't look at that as a concern necessarily. I think they've had some good chances, Darla. I would agree that sometimes on the power play, Tim, they get a little too fancy for their own good. They're always looking to make that one extra pass as opposed to just doing what you're supposed to do, get the puck to the net and look for rebounds. They do. Uh, I would say five on five where I see the overpassing occur is oftentimes, uh, of late anyway, whether it's Zucker or Sherry or Simone or whoever's playing with Crosby, there seems to be this conscious, conscious deference to Sidney Crosby. I don't know if it's to make him happy or what, but I constantly feel like the play when they're out there with Sid right now is to do what Sid thinks is the right thing to do instead of what just might be the right thing to do which is throw the puck on the net and then let Crosby do his magic from there. Here's the thing about Crosby, too. On his line right now, you got Zucker, and that's fine, but they immediately put Connor Sherry back on it, and I don't necessarily think that was required right off the bat. I know Dominic Simone got uh, hurt last night. He's been skating on a uh, third line or wherever. Maybe Hornquist needs to go back to that line, but there are some who believe that that's not the right combination, but he can do some of the stuff I that's required. I think by some you mean Sid. I mean, most people who have watched <laughs> those guys play together seem to think that them playing together is a good thing. And even Mike Sullivan, who's yes. put him there. Yes, and so. oftentimes in the playoffs and in crucial situations, too. And for whatever reason, when the stakes are at their highest, it seems like Crosby is the most willing to accept Hornquist there, which to me is counterintuitive. But um, I, I like the notion of having somebody who thinks the game like Crosby. I get that school of thought. I agree with it. But it's not just about thinking the game like Sid. It's also trying to complement him. 
and maybe these parts that they're trying to throw in his line, be it Sherry or Simone, aren't as complimentary as Crosby might think himself. You know, Bob, the issue that I've got with those two guys is if they aren't playing with Crosby, though, what are they? Who do they help? Well, if you're going to play on that line, you've got to put some points on the board, too. You can't just do that and do all the nice analytical things. You've got to score. Yeah, by what I've analytics, been, aside from the analytics, is Dominic Simone really helping it. Crosby when he's at his lowest rate for points well, at even strength? And I think that's be, Crosby's point production is down because the guys on his wing aren't doing what they're supposed well, he's to do. And he's not playing great either. But yeah. Well, the, I agree with that. On last this road six trip, games, he did not. Last six games. But even before then, sometimes, I thought some of the opportunities yes, that I would there, say there that, was yes, not enough I would puck burying for right. guys on that line. Now, Zucker's been okay there, but they need someone else on the other side to, to do I mean, he's at a minus seven right now. He hasn't yeah. been a minus player since his first year in but the But I'm not league. putting that all on him. I think line I'm mates have a lot to do I'm not putting it all on him, but I'm not absolving him I'm either. I'm not either. I agree with that. All right, let's go out to Gary in the South Hills. Hey, Gary, what's up? Gentlemen, thank you for taking my call. Appreciate it very much. Anytime. You know, one, one point I would like to make, I think uh, hasn't been mentioned yet, is, uh, you know, I watch a lot of hockey games, and it seems like the speed differential is negligible these days, so most teams are pretty fast. What I do notice, a big notice uh, with the Penguins, is they um, they get out muscled quite a bit. They're not hard enough on pucks, size wise. Uh, these other teams are taller, bigger, faster than the Penguins, and they get out muscled and outworked in the corners and so forth. That's the biggest difference that I see right now with the Penguins, and I think that's going to be more of even more of a struggle in the playoffs. Well, they're going to play teams. Thanks very much, Gary. They're going to play teams. They're going to bring it physically, and they're sitting. I don't necessarily look at that as a weakness so to speak I think it can play a factor I think it can you know result in the Penguins taking extracurricular penalties which we saw from Malkin the other night when he took a game as, or a uh, two minute was yeah he's conduct. been one of the few guys that's actually scoring a little bit during this streak right. during, the, during the six games he's gotten uh, five points I believe right. but he's also gotten 12 penalty minutes <laughs> so I, I think to the caller's point it's maybe not just flat out foot speed that is the problem where you say it's negligible between the Penguins and other teams right now, it might be puck moving speed. And perhaps that's something that comes back when John Marino and Brian Dumoulin come back. But boy, Bob, I mean, talk about the return of these two. It's like people are talking about the return of Ben Roethlisberger twice on this hockey team. John Marino and Brian Dumoulin are really good players, but, uh, you know, they were winning some games with those guys out, at least Dumoulin. They won right. plenty without Dumoulin before this. Now all of a sudden the six-game losing streak comes around. It's, oh, it's all about Brian Dumoulin. I, I, I can't buy that. I, that's a very hard shift in narrative to me. But his return should help, although it may take a few games for him to get back up to speed. He and Marino both give that defense a lot more depth, which they need. Tweet of the day. It's brought to you by Tri-State Office Furniture, and it comes to us from Gladys. Gladys, thank you for <laughs> – she says, watch out for O'Neill Cruz down at Pirate Land. I don't know if you've seen this kid play. Thank you for that, Gladys. That's our tri-state office. How long am I supposed to day. watch out for him? Four years? Three years? Well, that's years? the thing. I would say fast track, but then again, the pirate fast track normally is about three to five years. If the kid is ready to play and they can find a position for him, let him play. What's the harm? I don't oh. care what his age is. I don't care what his, you know, the bottom line is, you don't have to go through single, double, triple A and spend two years in each before you get here. Sometimes there are guys out there who can just play. Well, if they, they do it their usual way, we'll watch out for him. We'll watch out for him for three years. <laughs> and by the time he gets here, we'll say goodbye to Kevin Newman. And then when O'Neill Cruz is three or four years in, we'll say goodbye to him. And the next O'Neill Cruz will come along. Right. That's Same how the is true of Brian, uh, Brian, Ryan, Reynolds. Brian Reynolds. You got Josh Bell. They That's got how it. the Pirates do things. But it's not the right way to do things, quite frankly. They no, think it, it may be. It's not. We're going to take a break, oh, come back with more, not. including our hot or cold play of the day. That's next, right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're on Pittsburgh CW, seven nights a week. Portions of this program sponsored by FanDuel Sportsbook. 